Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Before I embark on the discussion, let me firstly say a few words. Thank you so much, guys, for showing concern. Some of you guys leave me comments and also email. I'm definitely not quitting because I'm doing this for fun. I actually take this opportunity to take a break, okay, to do nothing. And in fact, I recently just came back from a tour with my family. So therefore, it's almost a month since my last post. Once again, thank you so much for showing concern. Today, what I want to discuss will be on IEC or also known as EN 61000 4 2. Okay, this is actually known as ESD, Electrostatic Discharge. This will be the part 49 series discussion on EMC consideration. So, guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC consideration, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Once again, guys, thank you so much for your strong support. Okay, this is what I have shown it to you on the earlier on discussion on EMC. In fact, this diagram shows the commonly used EMC standard for a consumer electronic product which does not have any wireless communication functionality. This is where I want to zoom in for this discussion. EN61000-4-2, which is also known as ESD, Electrostatic Discharge. Firstly, okay, let's understand what is actually the IEC or also known as EN61000-4-2. Okay, this standard okay, is also commonly called Electrostatic Discharge Immunity, okay, compliance standard basically for commercial electronics to obtain CE product certification. In short, this standard is only required for CE or Europe. Okay, it's actually not required for FCC or USA. It is an international test standard that outlines electromagnetic immunity requirement for electronics equipment when exposed to ESD generated from a human body or metal object. What does this line mean? Let's take a look on this diagram. You probably have this kind of experience before. You actually touch on metal object Okay, and you actually felt the pain okay, because they actually discharge something and you become the victim of this kind of configuration. But let's take a look on the reverse angle. When you actually touch a DUT or EUT, you actually can become a source and the victim become your EUT or DUT become your victim and they actually suffer from your discharge. So basically this test here is basically to eliminate this kind of situation. When you actually touch on an EUT or DUT, you actually discharge it. And once you discharge it, okay, you can see that whether the DUT or EUT can still function as per normal. So basically, this is why we need to do this IEC or EN6000-4-2 test. Okay, the standard assumes that the source is an electrified human body discharge and testing sim simulate the current waveform generated in those conditions. Okay, like I told you that basically they eliminate like a human body discharge. Okay, they basically simulate the current waveform into this kind of configuration here. The occurrence of ESD is impossible to predict. So the best method is to take as much preventive measures to prevent damage or malfunction when it does occur. Okay, like what it mentioned, we cannot predict ESD, how severe or how bad the effect of ESD. So what we can do is basically we take some form of preventive measurement okay, in order to prevent damage or malfunction. In short, we want to ensure that the device that we meet 
market will be very robust to this kind of situation. When a human discharge into our EUT or DUT, we want our device to be continue able to function as its intent. So therefore, we need to eliminate this kind of test using this standard, okay, which is the IEC or EN61000-4-2. There are actually two forms. Okay, one is we call the direct contact discharge. Another form is the air discharge. Okay, you can take a look on the head. Okay, so you can see that for direct contact discharge, you have a pointed, okay, you can see that you have a pointed head. But for air discharge, you can see that it's much more round. Okay, so in short, okay, if you want to identify whether is it for direct or indirect contact discharge, okay, they basically will have a sharp edge. Okay, as for air discharge, okay, the head is actually rounded. Okay, let's take a look on this table here. So basically, this is the level of test. Okay, we have level one, level two, level three, and level four. And the amount on the test voltage is as such for contact discharge and also air discharge. So you probably will ask, okay, which level I need to test, whether is it level one, level two, level three, or level four. Okay, let's understand a little bit better. Okay, because this standard 61000-4-2 is basically a test standard. Okay, how we test is basically fall onto this IEC 61000-4-2. And this standard basically is not a product standard. So therefore, you have to check your ESD test level from the product standard. For example, for medical device, okay, which is actually governed by this IEC, Okay, EN 60601-1-2. Okay, the standard actually defined that the test level okay, for this air discharge must be plus minus 2, plus minus 4, and plus minus 8, which is level 1, 2, and 3. As for contact discharge, okay, it will be plus 2 kV, plus minus 4 kV, and plus minus 6 kV, which is also level 1, Two and three. So basically, from here you can see that based on the product standard for medical device, okay, they actually specify which level to test for this situation for a medical device. I need to test on level one, level two, and also level three. In short, here, this is what I have mentioned here: six zero six zero one dash one dash two for medical device. They will define. What is the ESD test level? While this standard IEC 61000-4-2 actually refer how we actually can perform the ESD testing. Next, okay, let's go through some of the guidelines, how we actually apply the ESD test. Okay, the point of application. Okay, so which means that all points that are so-called accessible to the user. Okay, any point that the user can touch on, we need to test to ensure the robust of the design against ESD. Okay, so basically all points are accessible to the user in normal operation. Okay, not necessary pin of open connector or point, which means that any op exposed open connector or point can okay, not necessarily be made to only this open connector or point or also accessible only during maintenance or servicing. In short, whatever points that are accessible to user, okay, you need to perform this ESD test. The EUT or DUT is subject to three types of discharge. Okay, so there are actually three types of discharge. The first one we know as direct contact discharge to the EUT or DUT is always preferred. So the preferred method is actually the direct contact discharge which I'm going to illustrate on the next few slides. The second method is indirect, okay, indirect contact through vertical or horizontal coupling plane. Okay, again, I will mention quickly on the next few slides, what is this indirect contact through vertical or horizontal coupling plane. And last but not least, air discharge is basically used where direct contact cannot be applied. Let's quickly mention about the numbers of discharge. Normally, we have 10 in each priority. We will test on 10 in each priority, positive and negative, which means that on the positive, I will test 10 times. At the negative, again, I will do test this for 10 times. I'll come to this again. 
the mode of application, okay, the test generator, which is the gun, the tip of the gun, okay, they must be perpendicular to the surface of the EUT or DUT for air discharge. Okay, so they it must form a 90 degree okay, against the EUT or DUT for air discharge. The tip must approach the EUT as fast as possible. Okay, so therefore, when you actually do an air discharge, you cannot so-called take your own sweet time to go near to your EUT because the discharge may be so-called, uh, the application may be finished. So what you need to do is you need to go as fast as possible towards your EUT okay, without causing any mechanical damage. Okay, for contact, it will be much more clear. Okay, the tips must touch the EUT okay, before you actually execute the discharge. Okay, so this is a simple guideline how to execute your ESD test. Okay, so again, if you think that this is helpful, please consider to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much, Guy. Okay, let's take a look on the EUT test setup. Okay, before we do anything, it's always very important okay, to make sure that the room where you execute the test is conducted. Okay, we must have a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius to 35 degrees Celsius. You need to ensure this temperature, 15 to 35 degrees Celsius, and also the relative humidity must be in between 30% and 60%. What we actually do is, we actually have our temperature and humidity, okay, so-called readings, that is basically on top of this uh, EUT test setup here. Okay, so as to ensure that the temperature and humidity meet the requirement as mentioned over here. Okay, let's take a look on this EUT test setup basically for this standard here. Okay, so this is basically a wooden table. Okay, you can see from here. Okay, so basically this is your EUT. This is where the gun that basically performed the discharge. Okay, you can see that I actually have this horizontal coupling plate. Okay, I have also the vertical coupling plate. Okay, you can see that the coupling plate is connected to two bleeding resistor. You can see that they are actually in series, two bleeding resistor, 470 kilo ohm. Okay, the coupling so-called plane is actually connected to the ground reference plane, as you can see from here, through the two bleeding resistor. Okay, I'll come into a little bit more detail on this so-called setup. I am also thinking to do a real practical test so as to let you fully understand how we can actually execute this test. Okay, the next video, I probably will do a so-called a practical session. How can we actually execute this ESD? Okay, but let's take a look okay, on how we actually can do this uh, EUT test first. Okay, the direct discharge test simulate the human body model of electrostatic discharge and therefore, we must set up to recreate similar condition. Okay, it is important to make sure that you have the proper grounding system in place before you actually start the so-called the testing. Okay, you need to have this ground reference print here. Okay, so as to ensure proper grounding before we actually embark on the testing on this ESD discharge here. When actually using a tabletop for testing, okay, it have a horizontal coupling plate on top of the table, but below an insulation sheet. Okay, let me take a look over here. You can see that this is basically the horizontal coupling plate. You can see that this yellow color, uh, sorry, this green color is actually an insulating support here. Okay, so basically this insulating support is basically in between the horizontal coupling plate and also your EUT. Okay, the reason it, why is because this is a conductor material, and if we put the EUT on a conductor material, we may be so-called short or whatever our electronics device. So therefore, we need to have this insulating so-called layer in between the horizontal coupling plate and also your EUT. Okay, so basically this is what it means here. Okay, let's continue here. Okay, this should be connected to a ground reference plane on the floor using 2 times 470 kilo ohm bleed resistor cable. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned earlier on. You can see that this 
so-called horizontal coupling plate. You can see over here, they are joined to the ground reference plane. Okay, basically, you can see that along the path, you actually see the two breathing resistor, 470 kilo ohm, as illustrated over here. Okay, so if your EUT is too large to place onto a table, okay, you need to place your EUT on an insulation pallet that is at least 0 0.1 meter in height. Okay, so typically, for example, if your EUT is too huge to put onto a table, so you need to find an insulation pallet that is almost 0 0.1 meter. Okay, and then before you can actually do the test. Okay, for direct discharge test, okay, we need to place the ESD gun to the point of test on the EUT and discharge at one second interval. You can see from here, basically this is a direct discharge test. Basically, your so-called ESD gun will be touching your EUT and you need to discharge at one second interval. Okay, this should be performed at least 10 times at both positive and negative. So what you need to do is you need to do 10 times positive and also 10 times negative and then you need to record your result. For indirect discharge test, the same process is repeated except that the discharge goes to the vertical or horizontal coupling plate rather than direct to the EUT. So in short, you can see from here, for a vertical coupling plane, okay, you should put your EUT 10 cm away and connect it to the ground reference plane using the bleed resistor. Okay, so I have shown it to you earlier on also. Okay, so this is the vertical coupling plane here. You can see that they are actually connected to the ground reference plane through the two 470 kilo ohm breathing resistor. So this is what it illustrates over here. Okay, so what is illustrated over here? So next, okay, the air discharge method is used for cases where contact discharge testing cannot be applied. Okay, for example, we have EUT that is moving. Okay, so basically when the device has a moving part, we can't do any contact because this thing is moving and we can't do a proper contact. Or in fact, if there are some separation, okay, again, we cannot use a direct contact, then we can consider to use air discharge. In this case, the ESD test gun is moved towards the EUT okay, without touching until the distance is small enough causing a discharge through the air gap to the EUT or DUT. As you can see from here, okay, we actually do this air discharge. We bring this so-called head of the discharge okay, as close to your DUT as possible. And then what you can see is basically you will see the discharge here. Okay, the air discharge method is commonly used for replicating real world event as well as when contact discharge is not possible. This simulates real situation as most discharge occur without having the intention of touching the EUT or DUT. Okay, as I have mentioned earlier on, okay, when we actually touch a matter, okay, for example, before we even have the opportunity to touch on the metal surface, basically discharge can be happen. So basically this emanates like an air discharge. Okay, so multiple discharge points may be required for testing depending on the types of EUT and the EUT. Okay, so basically we may have to perform multiple discharge points. Okay, it actually depends on what types of EUT we actually have. So with this, i like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.